Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. If you have seen my channel, you know that at the end of each video, I ask my subscribers to tell me what are some topics that you would like to hear more about. And a lot of you have been asking me to do a video on job interview etiquette. So this video is dedicated to exactly that. And as always, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. First things first, before we delve into the tips in preparation for a job interview, let's talk about what is a job interview. A job interview is the last stage in a recruitment process where the interviewers, so the representatives of the company, ask potential candidates different kind of questions in order to find out which one of the candidates that sounded amazing on paper actually sounds good in life as well. The interview itself, as the word already indicates, is a question and answer between the representative of the company or perhaps a panel of representatives of the company and the job applicant. This is a very important moment, a life deciding moment, because the way the interview goes can decide whether or not the job applicant is actually going to get the job. Depending on the competitiveness of the job of the position, there could be one or multiple interviews. So it is very important to be well prepared for every single interview that you'll be handling in the future. So make sure you sit down, take a notebook and a pen and take notes. So why is it important to know some etiquette rules in preparation for a job interview? Primarily because knowing certain rules of behavior will help you to represent the best version of yourself when you're there, nervous, entering the room of people that are there to judge you. You're naturally very nervous entering that room and so you're thinking about what you're going to say, how are you going to represent your credentials, how are you going to talk about your accomplishments. So on top of that, having to think of how to behave, what to do, what to say is too much. So when you know the proper etiquette rules, that will take away the extra anxiety that you have and you will just focus on how to present my credentials and how to talk about my accomplishments. Furthermore, when you have applied for a job and you have been invited for a job interview, think that there are several other candidates that have already made through the last stage as well. And they're also invited for a job interview. And that interview will decide who's going to get the job. So essentially what happens is that people on the same level, with the same diplomas, more or less the same credentials and accomplishments, are working to get one position. So the one thing that will make you look apart or stand out from the rest of the crowd is how well you represent yourself, how well you behave yourself at that interview, how well you show yourself at that interview. So that is when etiquette comes handy. To prove this point, I want to bring you a quote by Clarence Thomas, who is the US Supreme Court judge. And I've included this quote in my book as well because I simply love the message. It says, good manners can open door that the best education cannot. And this is so true. In today's world, you won't really surprise much people with your amazing education, and your amazing accomplishments and credentials. What really strikes people in today is how well behaved you are, how well mannered you are. So good manners certainly will open amazing doors for you. So now let's look at the certain etiquette rules that will come handy when preparing for a job interview. Rule number one is dress up. And what I mean by dressing up is dress up for the job that you want and not for the job that you apply. I love this saying and it's so true because you have to keep in mind what are your aspirations and your goals in life. Perhaps at this point in your life you're not able to get that particular position that you want. But when dressing up, keep in mind that dream, that aspiration of yours when you are dressing up for the interview that will hopefully over time take you to a certain position that you so much desire. Why is dressing up so important for a job interview? I love to draw the similarity with a superhero putting on his costume. It's the superhero that has the power, it, the power is within him, but that costume puts him in the right mindset and gives him the idea that he can conquer the world and save people. I think the same applies to dressing up for a job. So when you put the right suit on, the right outfit on, you have this mindset that you are ready to conquer, you're ready to represent yourself, and you're ready to achieve your dreams. 
But what is the right dress code for a job interview? The dress code for a job interview is business. It could be business casual or business formal, depending on what kind of company you are applying to. But to be on the safer side, if you're not sure whether it's casual or formal, stick to business formal, because that will make sure that you will come prepared and you will look the best possible way that you can. For men, that entails a good, well-ironed, well-taken-care-of dark suit with a nice uh, dress t-shirt that could be white, beige, or light blue color with a nice tie that matches the suit, as well as dark formal shoes. For women, this could be, again, well-taken-care-of, well-ironed, uh, dark colored suit. Uh, it could be with pants or a skirt. It could be a nice blouse with a skirt or pants with flats, uh, perhaps kitten heels or mid-heel shoes. For both men and women, make sure you stay away from bright colors or bold designs or bold patterns as they'll tend to distract the interviewer from you. In terms of your hair, for men and women, if you have dandruff, make sure you get rid of that, especially before the job interview day, because the dandruff will be shown on the shoulders of a dark colored suit. You want to make sure your hair is clean and looks neat. For women, you can put your hair in a ponytail or a nice bun. If you have a uh, shorter hair or if you like to style your hair in a certain way, you can surely do that, but make sure it's not all over your face so it doesn't distract the interviewer from you and from what you're saying. Again, for men and women, make sure that your skin is clean. For men, make sure that your beard is well groomed. For women, when you're applying makeup, make sure you keep it natural. Stay away from any bold colored lipsticks or perhaps smoky eyes because the job interview really takes take place during the daytime so you're makeup should be appropriate for daytime. For men and women, make sure you take care of your nails, that they are clean, that they are cut, um, because when you'll be talking, your interviewers will be paying attention to your nails and your fingers as well. For women, when you're getting your manicure and choosing a nail polish color, keep in mind when is your interview day, because on your interview day, you don't want to have bright nail polish or some patterns or designs on your nail. Keep it clean, keep it preferably short, and keep it to some pastel colors, preferably beige or light pink or white colors. When it comes to accessories, make sure to keep them subtle. So for men, a watch and then perhaps an engagement ring. For women, a watch, engagement ring, a nice ring of maybe a pair of earrings or a necklace. Uh, whatever you choose to wear, make sure it's minimal and it doesn't distract the interviewer from you. Again, same applies to your accessories like belt. If you're wearing a belt, make sure it's not flashy. Perhaps it's not a huge logo on it. Keep it subtle and keep it neat. When it comes to one word describing your total look, and that could be the word modest, whatever you wear, make sure that you fit that description. So neither too much of your skin is exposed or not too many flashy accessories are on you. So make sure that you look representable, formal and modest. Speaking about dress etiquettes, take me to my second point, which is grooming. And that is particularly about taking care of your breath. Make sure you check it before entering the room to avoid any bad breath, use chewing gums or mints, but make sure you discard them before entering the room. Because when you enter the room, you might have forgotten you have a chewing gum in your mouth. And while the interviewer is asking you questions, because you're nervous, you can mindlessly just chew the gum, which will distract the interviewer. So it's important to have a good breath, but get rid of any mint or chewing gum that you have in your mouth before entering the room. Tip number three is arrive on time. And when I say arrive on time, I literally mean arrive right on time. It's quite obvious why arriving late might make you look bad. A, it shows that you don't have any value for time, so you lack time management skill. So if you're not able to value time, how else are you gonna be able to value other things? Also, it allocates less time to you during the interview. You know that the interviews are scheduled back to back. So if you arrive late, you have less time for yourself. You have less time to talk about yourself and to represent the best version of yourself. Oftentimes, the reason for someone being late is because they were not familiar with the place that they had to come in. So perhaps they didn't know the region or the neighborhood or they confused the buildings. In that case, my advice for all my students is that if you have a spare day, allocate that day for checking out the venue where your interview will be held. 
Make sure that you allocate one day prior to the interview day to come check out the place where your interview will be held. So plan your time, look at the place, perhaps find the right building, which floor it's going to be held, and then know which kind of transportation you're going to use. Is it a bus, a taxi, or a metro? So on the day of the interview, you actually know how many minutes or perhaps hours you need to allocate for your transportation time. Arriving early is also not a good thing, especially 10 or more minutes. Because when you arrive early, you put the interviewer in a very uncomfortable position. Either he or she is going over the last points that he or she is going to be asking you, or perhaps they're interviewing someone else. The interviewers usually don't like when the candidates get to see each other. So in order to avoid that uncomfortable situation, make sure you wait somewhere else. Perhaps there's a coffee shop nearby where you can stop and wait for some time. And then when the time comes, you can go to your interview venue and start your interview. Tip number four, leave all your heavy belongings outside. That includes your umbrella, perhaps your coat, if it's winter time, a heavy bag that you have. By the assistant, you can ask him or her to take care of your belongings while you are having an interview. This is important because when you enter the room, the 7 seconds will really make an impression on the interviewer. And when you enter, you don't want to look sloppy and overburdened with extra items. Tip number 5. Walk in confidently. Walking confidently, make sure you check out my videos on how to walk properly, smile, and in a good times, I would say, extend your hand for a firm handshake. In times of COVID, you might want to skip the step and just a good nod and a genuine smile will suffice. Tip number six is sit down when gestured to do so. This is important because you should not take your seat unless you've been gestured or said, please take your seat. Then you take your seat, you sit comfortably, make sure you maintain a very straight posture. One of the most important questions that a lot of students ask is, what do I do with my hands? Oftentimes, your hands give away your anxiety. You either touch your hair or your accessories, or you do something fidgety with your hands. Make sure you keep them either on your lap, especially when you are in the US, or if you're in Europe, make sure your hands are visible. So you might want to place your hands by their wrists at the table while talking. Tip number seven is maintain a good eye contact. This is important to establish a rapport, a trust between you and the interviewer. If there's one person interviewing you, make sure you maintain the eye contact with that person. If it's a panel, make sure you have an eye contact with each member of the panel. If there's someone asking you a question, gaze into their eyes. And then when answering, make sure you look at everyone's eye when answering the question. So where is it okay to look at? the? Allocated places where you can look on the face is the eyes, the eyebrows, and the forehead. So this triangle up here, because the gaze below that will have a very informal vibe to it. So if you are at the interview, make sure you only look at the interviewer's eye, eyebrows, or forehead address the interviewer the way he or she wants it to. Perhaps you already know their name and when you enter, they introduce themselves again and they say, for example, he says, uh, Hi, my name is Jonathan, but you can call me John. That means he allows you to address him first name basis. If you're not given that permission, then you should address them in a formal way, which is Mr. and Mrs. and plus their last name. Tip number nine, be ready to engage into small talk. And when I say small talk, I mean anything that's not pertinent to your application or your CV. The interviewer might ask you questions that are about the weather or how your day went. Do not disregard the small talk because it's an icebreaker that will set the tone for the rest of the interview. Be careful, be mindful, answer politely and be interested in a small talk. Tip number 10. Know your resume or CV by heart. What I actually mean is we tend to write our CVs years and years ago and when you were applying to a job, you might have forgotten certain details of your job requirement or maybe you have forgotten to uh, look over your credentials, your accomplishments in the last 10 years. So what matters is that you have to be ready to discuss each of those points written in your CV. So the better prepared you are, the better you're going to be. And that also includes making a copy for each interviewer. Make sure that you take your own copy of your CV and hand it in to the interviewer. 
most likely they're gonna have their own copy but seeing that you brought an extra copy for each one of them will make a huge difference tip number 11 be ready to discuss all different kind of questions the best way to prepare it is to google the most frequently asked questions and then mentally go through them days and days before the interview so when the day comes you're ready to discuss them one of the most frequently asked questions by the interviewers is what is your strengths or what is your limitation? A lot of us are well aware of our strengths. We have already written them out in the CV and they're quite obvious. Either we're good with numbers or maybe we're good with some technology or maybe we're good with languages. But oftentimes we find it difficult to answer the question, what are your limitations? When answering the question about your limitation, please do not portray your strength as your limitation because it shows that you're not being honest or that you're fishing for compliments. Think truly, what is your limitation? For example, in my case, I have had a very difficult time delegating tasks to other people. I want to do it all by myself because I feel like I don't trust when other people get it done for me. So I want to manage everything. And I would even say micromanage everything. That's very difficult and it doesn't really show that I'm a good manager. So this is something that is my limitation, but could be turned into strengths if I get a certain position or if I work in a right environment. Tip number 12 is do your research about the company you're applying to. This shows how well prepared you are and how professional you are. So when entering the interview, when you're talking about the company, you know exactly who is the CEO, where the markets are located, what are the core values of the company. At the end, when they ask you to ask certain questions, you don't ask questions like, oh, where are the markets located? Or what are your values of the company? Because they will just say, you can find it online. Moreover, it will help you to get a better idea about the company. So where is the company growing? Where is it venturing out? Perhaps certain industries or maybe regions. For example, if you know that the company is venturing to, you know, open new markets in Latin America, you could say, you know, I speak Spanish, I'm well aware of the Latin American market, and I think I could be an asset in your company because I'll help you to find out about that region and perhaps venture out in that region. All I'm saying is do your homework, learn about the company you're applying to because it shows A, your professionalism and B, that you care for the company that you aspire to work in. Tip number 13, pose questions when asked to do so. When the interviewer at the end of the interview says, do you have any questions for us? Do not disregard this part. Do not say, no, I don't, because it shows that you lack interest in the company. Some of the questions that you might ask, because you've already done your homework and research about the company, is not about the values of the company or the places it tries to venture out, but it's more open-ended and evaluative. For example, how is my work going to be evaluated? How has the work experience been for you in this company? Tell me about it. That shows your curiosity and your interest in the company, and these questions cannot be answered online. Tip number 14 thank the interviewer and do it twice once right at the end of the interview in good old days it would entail a good firm handshake with a genuine smile and a thank you in time of covid this is just a simple nod with your head a genuine smile and thank you for your time the second time you should thank your interviewer is a day after you could send an email if you know that the decision for this position will be made within two or three days. If they're going to take more time to make the decision, then you can send a beautiful handwritten thank you note. And the final tip for today's video is rehearse, rehearse and rehearse. I cannot emphasize this more enough because the best performer is the one that has rehearsed the most. And that's true in everything that we do mentally go over the questions that you might most likely be asked go about how you're going to enter the room how you're going to sit down you can ask your parents or your siblings to be the judge of it and the better you prepare the better off you're going to be on the day of performance Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found these tips useful and applicable in your lives and you put them into good use. I wish you all the best in your current careers and all the best of luck in your future endeavors, whatever they might be. Thank you again and I'll see you next time. Bye!